So as you can see, she doesn't walk around. It just sits here on the, the countertop. Uh, there's a small camera inside one of the eyes. So the typical interaction would be, you know, standing in front of her, and she's going to be looking at me, making eye contact while we're talking. So we know that's one of the, the features of the interaction that's important to initially drawing someone in and helping them, uh, helping them to stay engaged over time. So as you can hear, she's speaking aloud. She so shows what she's saying on the screen. I know given the, the size of this and the size of this room, not everyone can see her, but I'll leave her on uh, when we're done here if you want to come try her out. And uh, so she's speaking aloud, but for input, for me responding to her, I use the buttons on the screen. And the reason for that is we just don't feel like speech recognition technology is good enough yet for the use case of this. So you know, if I'm speaking directly into my phone, it works reasonably well. If you know, I'm standing here, the microphone's right here. So we do have the microphone built in for later use. Uh, and you know, typically I'm using this at home, maybe the TV or the radio's on, there's kids running around in the background. With all that extra noise and the distance to the microphone that you know, I don't necessarily know what it is, you know, we just found it very unreliable to use speech recognition. And one thing that's very important to us is being able to make this easy to use, make it very simple. The most complex technical thing one of our users has to do is reach out and touch a button on the screen. There's no menus, there's no setup, everything is through conversation. So if we throw in something like that, it, uh, it becomes challenging. All right, so she gives me some <coughs> buttons on the, the screen to respond with. I can say, good to see you. I hope the weather outside isn't too bad for you today. Should make a little small talk here, okay. Mm -hmm. Is there something specific you'd like to discuss before you tell me about your day? Okay, so the, the buttons on the screen are, I can say, you know, no, let me just tell you about today, which is kind of a typical everyday conversation that I'll have here. Or what we've seen is some people just want to see how they're doing. They don't necessarily want to have that, keep track of what they're doing in the conversation, but just see, you know, am I doing well or not so well today or this week? Or I can talk about my goals. So in the very first conversation, uh, she's going to help me set up, you know, what are my goals for how much I'm going to eat, how much I'm going to exercise each day, what is the weight goal I'm trying to achieve over what period of time. And then every once in a while, she'll go back and review those. Now, the way I have her set up right now for demoing is obviously it's not that first conversation. She would also be explaining how she works. Some of the things I just told you about speaking aloud, using the buttons to respond. But it's still fairly early on. So we've got it set up so it's a few weeks into the relationship. So that uh, you know, the state of the relationship is we're still getting to know each other. Uh, and so she'll be a little more explanatory. So some of the things she'll say now, she would not say after you know, a month or two of interacting with me. It's like, I already know that stuff. Let's just, just get down to business. So I'll say, no, let me just tell you about my day. Great. Let's talk about your recent eating and exercise. I'm ready. Would you like to tell me about any meals you might have had today? I'd be happy to. Okay, so what happens here is she's got buttons on the screen for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. The most common behavior that we've seen people use this in the evenings, we just break it down by meals for ease of recall. So I'll start with breakfast. Choose one of your previous foods from the list below, or search for a new one. Alright, so what's happening here is there's a list of, of foods on the screen. I know you can't see that from out there. What we're doing here is taking advantage of the fact that most of us are fairly habitual to things that we eat. I know when I'm home, there's about two or three things I ever have for breakfast. You know, for lunch or dinner, it's a little bit more varied. Now, we've licensed a database from a company called Calorie King that some of you might be familiar with. So we have 75,000 foods in here. This is their U.S. database. So odds are, if it's you know, something I've eaten, either bought at a grocery store or at a restaurant, you know, even name brands are already in here, something I've cooked for myself, that's already in here along with the whole portion size and the calorie information. And I can go in and edit any of that, or I can add new foods. You know, the recipe I've made for myself at home, I could go and add it the first time I've had it, and she'll remember it from now on. But you know, typical behavior is I'll have eaten something that's already on the screen. So let's see what I have here. Some yogurt right at the top. All right, so she shows that on the screen. If I had other things, I could go in and add those. And there's a lot more features for adding foods that we've done to simplify and make this really fast for people, but I won't go into those now. The graph below shows how you've been doing recently with your calorie goal. You can select a different date to tell me about meals you had on the day. All right, that's good for now. And how much exercise have you gotten today? So right now she'll let me enter either a number of steps or amount of time I've spent exercising. I just got off a plane, so I'll say not now. Thanks for letting me know how your diet is going. So she's polite. And again, the way that she phrases things like this are actually important to creating and maintaining that relationship over time. Would you like to see how you've been doing recently? Definitely. 
Alright, so these are features. Of the category button below to see a graph of how you've been doing with that goal. So you can also press on the graph to get more detailed look of how you've been doing. These graphs actually relate a lot to what David was talking about. I'm not going to try to show this off here because I know the screen is very small. But you know, she starts by asking about specifics of what I've done in terms of you know number of calories I've eaten. And I don't actually tell the number of calories, I tell the specific foods, uh, as well as how much exercise I've gotten. So those are all obviously numbers coming into the system. But then we show this in terms of graphs and trends. Uh, and in particular, compared to the goals I've set for myself. So am I, uh, and there's little you know, indicators on the side here, am I above or below or roughly at the goals I've set for myself? And this is something that we've seen that people find really useful, just kind of a quick glimpse of how I'm doing. Now, of course, some of us want to know, you know more of the detail, so we have the ability, you know, I can touch one of these things, I can scroll through a graph at the bottom, uh, I can drill down to the week, the day, the particular meal or exercise that I did. But for the most part, people want that quick overview, which is what we show on this, this screen here. And I can get some feedback as well. If there's anything else you'd like to discuss with me now? No, not right now. If you set reasonable goals for exercise and weight loss, you'll be more likely to reach them. This will make you ready to set another goal for maintaining what you have achieved or doing even more. All right, so she gives some feedback and advice on this particular model because they have so many people using her, it's fairly random. But she actually learns about each person over time. So based on my behaviors and the feedback I've given her on whether or not particular pieces of advice are useful, this gets customized to each person over time. And for some of our customers, particularly the health insurers, they are looking at replacing this with uh, advice around particular weight loss programs that people are enrolled in. So this is something that we can tailor either for groups of people and more specifically to the individual. I can say, okay, that was useful. Before we say goodbye, can you tell me if you feel that as a result of our discussions, you are more clear about how you might be able to change? All right, so this is an indicator she thinks that something has changed about uh, the relationship state because she's asking a question that's more specifically about that. This kind of thing doesn't happen every day. You know, she thinks that uh, we're kind of moving along, so I can say, okay, definitely I do. Thanks for the feedback. I will continue to try my best to help you with your weight loss goals. Thank you. I'm looking forward to talking with you again tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good day. Bye. So if I hadn't spent time explaining it, one interaction is around three or four minutes. So you don't actually spend that long talking with her every day. But what we've seen is it's very effective at actually keeping someone coming back every day and talking with her. And that's the real challenge around you know, any sort of behavior change issue. You know, weight loss is one that we know a lot about. The average diet lasts three and a half weeks. So it's really short and you know, not nearly long enough to be effective. And what we've shown that we can do with this is actually keep people engaged for significantly longer periods of time. So I'm going to stop.